Bosse was called laboratory of the ecumenical movement from the very beginning. And the idea of the first general secretary, Wieser Hooft, was to create an institute where to bring together students from all over the world, especially from conflicted nations or confessions, to offer them a safe ground for discussion and to test out issues and challenges that churches and the world was faced with those days. So even after 1948, when it was integrated in the World Council of Churches, <coughs> still Bosse remained the place where the most delicate and sensitive issues were dealt with. I heard something about ecumenism in Siberia, but I didn't know what is exactly. I had my own opinion that ecumenism is a trying to create, attempt to create new dogmatic system to unite all Christian denominations, all churches, and here I understood this is this is wrong opinion. Ecumenism is not something like this. We have a very uh, colorful uh, group. I mean that uh, we are from uh, different cultures, different continents, different uh, countries, and that's why for me it's uh, especially interesting and, and exciting. I have a, a church music uh, degree uh, in Hungary, so for me it's a special challenge, for example, to take part uh, in the music life here in, in Bosse, because we have uh, every morning um, common prayers, and a lot of times I, I play the piano or the organ. <laughs> It's a very big challenge to, to learn with each other and to live with each other <laughs> because of the cultural uh, differences. Um, this week we had a lot of argument about um, different theological questions, about the sacraments, the liturgy, about uh, uh, the sense and, and uh, about the church organization. Um, sometimes it's, it's very difficult to find uh, the common points, but <laughs> we try to do it. I am a, a Methodist. I meet maybe an Orthodox or someone from different faith. What I've learned is like I have to respect that person according to his culture, background first, the religion, the tradition. Come together, sit, talk and listen to one another. I think the biggest challenge is not to search uh, the differences, but, but to um, look for the, the common points. And Bosse is a very unique place because um, this is a very special place we can uh, be together. Um, we are not a church here. We are an institute of the whole class of churches. So we offer an academic and a free platform where people come and meet and discuss. And then the outcome of our reflections and discussions are further uh, discussed within the World Council of Churches uh, network uh, or framework and by the churches themselves. And I can tell you, ma many of the outcomes which have been uh, reached in Bosse have been taken over and became statements and positions in the World Council of Churches or taken by the churches. I was a student in 84, 85. Those days were very much um, interested in some of the hot theological debates, which were very much characteristic to the northern hemisphere, Europe and America. We discussed about apostolic succession, seven sacraments, Virgin Mary, icons, uh, uh, ordination of women, and all these kind of theological topics. Nowadays, more than 80% of our students come from the South. And when they have come in such a great number, the interest of the, in the subjects in the ecumenical formation had a shift. And some of the new challenges they have brought are the following. How do you call yourself all kinds of churches when the growing number of the Christians also in the South belong to Evangelicals and Pentecostals. And since 2001, one third of our students are coming from these churches. And some of the churches they are coming from are openly against the ecumenical movement. But we learned that we have to go this way and to stay together. 
because even students coming from historical traditional churches, when they go home, they are meeting with evangelicals and Pentecostals. And evangelicals and Pentecostals are more and more aware of the need of dialogue and being ecumenically open to others. common prayer with, for example, with Baptists, with Methodists. Maybe it's the most frightening moment. It's not a problem for me to have a conversation or something else. Almost every day we have some theological discussions, not only in our lessons, but of course in our home. But this ecumenical worship, it's difficult. Formation in Bosse happens to shock therapy. And those shocks do not happen in the library nor in the courses either. Because when you discuss a uh, subject uh, or a chapter from a book, you may come to certain agreements. But most of the shocks are coming to life in community and especially life in worship. Because when you worship, it's your intimate identity. And if you are yourself, you show the others who you are. And by making others uh, able to see who you are, you may shock them. And this is uh, the strength of Bosse, by uh, forming them ecumenical to life in community and life in worship. But after a month or so, it's a kind of tendency to copy others just in, a, in an attempt to please others or to come to a common ground, which make a kind of uh, oneness that is identical and is no longer ecumenical. And I encourage them to stay with the, their identity and show the others who they are. Until 90s, from my experience, I saw from my generation a struggle to reach a common ground in order to reach Christian unity. The students today no longer agree with common grounds and common statements and common documents and consensus documents in order to reach unity. Some of them even challenge us that by imposing a common statement on a common ground, we try to dilute identities and create another identity by washing out the particularities of different identities. And they're asking the question now, how can we stay who we are but discover together a unity of koinonia, of communion? and harmony. In a harmony, different elements are not the same, but they are in consonance with one another. So this is the new search of our students. That's why I insist to keep their identities and look for our common faith, which is the apostolic faith. What are the Catholics and the Orthodox, the Anglicans, the Protestants saying? But what about people of other faiths? Most of them come from societies where Christianity is a minority. And they are witnessing to their faith in a non-Christian majority. So what does it mean to be a Christian today in a context of multi-faith and multi-culture realities? So due to that, we decided to invite to our classes also uh, experts and scholars from Jewish, Muslim, Hindu and Buddhist communities to speak to our students about their view on the subject of the school or the graduate school that we are having. Some people may tell you that uh, ecumenism is no longer fashionable. Ecumenism is diminishing its importance and so on. I may see those tendencies when I go outside or in the regions or in different churches. Not because people are against ecumenical ideas, but they are too busy with strengthening their own identities. However, what I see with the Bosse students, they go out with a renewed uh, enthusiasm 
about ecumenical togetherness. And I see that during the five months when they are in Bosse, despite frustrations and tensions and discussions, because we are having, this is not a peaceful community. We are having all the time challenges. But once they go home, they remain with that passion for unity, whatever unity may look like. Because what happens here is life-changing experience, but also infusing in the people who are going from here this enthusiasm for continuing the search for ecumenical togetherness. We are all together in this ship and um, we are traveling together and this is a very uh, amazing journey.